Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Yeah, good. Here comes Robin. Um, Video on. There we go. Yay. Hiya. Excellent. How are you doing? Well done, yeah, not, both of you. Not bad, how are you? <laughs> yeah, good. Gary, good. say hello to Robin. Robin, say hello to Gary. Robin, nice to meet you. You too. I've got, you too. Uh, Robin has kindly agreed to kind of co-host with me again. Um, he's a He's a good... Uh, opposite to my aging cynicism. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with a bit of that. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> no, definitely. I'm making it my goal to um, get him to enter as many ultras as possible. Well, some some anti aging tablets or something. If you've got those, I'll have those. Hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll look around. I think we need we need the anti physical aging bit, don't we? Yeah, most definitely. Um, so, um, Gary Doolan, thank you for, for joining me, um, for joining us. Uh, how do I introduce you? You, you seem to really like epic races, like the really long stuff, the harder, the better, it seems to me. Yeah, I think I, I prefer longer ultra marathons, um, although the one I've just tried to do. Was possible was possibly a little step too step too far in, at that particular time, but um, yeah, I think because I, I you know I'm not fast, I'm not I can't sprint, um, I can't go shorter distances. I don't really enjoy, so I think I think the longer stuff just seems to suit me better. And I had a bit of a cycling background, which was sort of longer longer time trials, uh, and that okay. seems to have, that seems to have crossed over into the into the running. So. Um, yeah, the longer stuff and a couple of stage races and things, which which have, have been quite been quite entertaining. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm, I ain't hugely fast, but I seem to have a bit of a motor that, when it works, uh, let let lets me keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, so you you've just started the line. So this is mm -hmm. a Mark Cobain event. Is it a new one for him? No, I think this was the second year that he's he's run it. Um, and it was, oh, I think, where are we now? Two weeks ago. Um, so mm -hmm. it should have been, uh, it should have been a week long, almost certainly five days. And uh, I think it was about the 7th of July. So, yeah, it's, um, he says it's 300 miles, but typical of um, of his events, it's uh, closer to 330. And it was loosely from somewhere east of Hull to somewhere east of Brighton, following something called the, uh, the Meridian Trail, mm -hmm. I think they called it. Um, and it was self-supported. Um, sleep in a um, if you if you're really weak, sleep in a bivy bag. Uh, if you're really hard, just sleep in a bin bag or something you find at the side of the road. Is is loosely uh, how <laughs> how he marketed it and how he sold it. So um, it definitely it definitely appealed. Um, and there was a there was a sort of clear plan. Uh, you, you have to find your own food and your own water and and basically carry everything yourself. So there was a clear plan to. To do you know sixty odd miles a day, or whatever. But unfortunately, I, I, in training for it, decided to test all my um, my pack by going up the glitters uh, in yeah. Snowdonia uh, and staying overnight. And um, I packed too much and basically fell on top of the glitters, smashed my knee. So uh, I had a knee injury going in, but I wanted to start. Um, and by about 20, 25 miles, that was starting to to bite. Uh, and by 50 odd miles, it, it, it was, it, I could have continued, I suppose. Uh, had it been 100, I would have continued and, and dealt mm -hmm. with it at the end. But um, uh, yeah, there was no way I was going to go five days or six days on that. No, and I didn't know what damage I was, I didn't know what damage I was doing. So there's a, the first, there's no real cutoffs other than the first time stamp that you have to get, which is the Humber Bridge. And that's about 40 mile away. They yeah. got to the Humber Bridge, got to the Humber Bridge. Um, it looks a it looks a really generous cutoff. Um, it's something like nine hours. You basically have to get there before they close the bridge the bridge to pedestrians, uh, and it looks really generous. But my God, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. We start we started in a hailstone. Um, we started in a field. There were loads more fields. There were loads of. It, we were following a route, but there was no path in some places and stuff. It was it was excellent. It was brilliant. Um, thoroughly thoroughly entertaining. Um, but we only just made the cutoff, 
and yeah, I've, I've done that sort of distance uh, a lot quicker. So that was a bit um, of a wake up call. Uh, and then we cracked on through Hull, but I, I once I got over the Humber Bridge, it, it the, the wheels literally came off, and um, I just had to make a decision to 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 call it really, and then somehow try and get back to the start, which at two o'clock in the morning or something was was quite entertaining in its own right. Um, this year there, there weren't as many runners this year for a number of reasons, and and um, nobody finished it. So I think by day three everybody had, everybody had gone. So, um, but from what I can gather. Uh, everybody's signed straight back up for next year, and I, I'm certainly um, got it on my radar for next year. So, uh, un- unfinished business, if you like. I mean, that's it's 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 such a, a different style of event to the ones that we're used to seeing, and and certainly the ones that are more publicised and they've got sort of bigger marketing. Mm. What I mean, what when you sign up for it, I mean, what do you actually get from the organisers side? Um, Casey, honestly, I, I, it's it's interesting because I've seen some sort of threads on on social media and stuff, and it it is interesting. I mean, in terms of cost, it's mm. lo, it's low cost. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it really is. And I'm, um, I've got a place in the Dragons Back next year, and I, and I don't doubt the work that goes into the Dragons Back and races like that. Really commercial, you know. Mm. Um, lots of lots of input required by by lots of people, and a price that goes with it. Uh, Mark's races um, are really uh, basics, stripped down to, to basics in in many cases. But equally, that appeals, doesn't it? So yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the, you you tracked and um, you get the sort of the community spirit of of a load of other, quite frankly. Uh, deranged people uh, meeting at the same place to do the same thing um, and he shared some medals and all that stuff he's got a number of different races uh, I mean it's probably the most high profile one which I, I was in this year was the tunnel um, yeah. Yeah. and you know um, they all offer different things I think uh, Long Lass is, is a Welsh one there's checkpoints on that I mean on this on this one there were no the line there were no checkpoints um, I think he's got the, the one in the winter uh, the Viking Way Ultra yeah, indoor indoor checkpoints and things. So there's a, there's a there's a spread for everybody, uh, but I think I'm I'm looking at another race, uh, another couple of races for the next year. Um, that really are stripped right back. I, that that sort of appeals to me now, and I don't want to get into the well. I don't mind getting into it, but I've got my my thoughts on the whole ARC UTMB thing uh, and what comes with that. I've got a place in that next year I've done it once I've got a place in that again that we'll see what what happens but you know I can run 330 miles with Mark Cockbane for less than the price of whatever with UTMB and the ARC so uh, yeah. you pay your money you take pay your money and take you know you take choices don't you so um, some cracking races out there that 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 are of a similar cost to to these and um I mean, I imagine they're just incre- they're just very different experiences. I mean, despite the fact you're running from A to B uh, in as you know an efficient as fast as possible, everything else is a is just a completely different offers completely different experiences around it, doesn't don't they? Yeah, I think um, they do, and and I, I I've I've worked a few races this year, and I sort of volunteer if you like GB Ultras. Uh, yeah. So so I did their uh, the inaugural sky trail one back in may up in up in guy um different again you know five six quality checkpoints i mean absolute quality checkpoints tons of marshals safety i was on the safety team you know mountain safety teams the whole the whole thing and just a different a different suite of things i don't know if i compare it to football and i'm not casting aspersions on on mark's races at all but you know you can pay 150 pound and uh, go and watch Liverpool in a box, or you can pay 20 pound to go and watch Tranmere Rovers and still watch a game of football and have a great time. So, you yeah. know, I, I, I've sort of, I'm graduating back towards um, less commercial races. It's probably an easier way of, of, of saying it. Um, and, and these, these suit me and there's others um, I'm looking at, Ten drink for next year, um, which again, you know, not overly expensive, I suppose. Just a single uh, one. Sorry. Just a single. 
the 250, some 250 miles yeah. one. Not not a double Thames ring, anyway. Someone did not, that. Did Someone they? did that a couple of years ago. Pretty sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I get I, out I, there. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did something in April, which was um, it's a long story. I did something uh, Dublin to Belfast um, in April. Uh, and halfway through, I got chatting to somebody who told me that they'd done it a couple of years before. And as soon as they got to Belfast, they turned around and ran straight back to Dublin. So, um, but I think with these, I, th- I think, I think with these, it's um, it's often your mentality going in, isn't it? If you know you've got to do that, you you do it. I think. Yes. Uh, I think Mark Cockburn himself, uh, let him speak for himself, but I think he did. He did bad water, had a cup of tea, and then turned around and ran back again. So, uh, did he? Yeah, it, uh, yes, he did. I think so. It's on. Wow. He's got a. He's got a blog, and he's got a blog on his site about it. So, um, but I think that that's okay, isn't it? Not that's okay, but doing that sort of thing is all right if you prepped for it. And 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 I thought, in all honesty, for the line, I, I was training for it as a running race, uh, rather naively until about a few weeks before, and then realised it was probably more of a a walking race. And um, I think, if I'm honest, I think that's when my head came off as well during the race because it was like. I can't, I can't go at sort of two miles an hour. You know, I'm really struggling it's mentally. It's a uh, different, yeah, it's a different yeah. mentality. I do actually. I think thinking about it, I think forty miles in nine hours is actually quite a tight uh, cut off, uh, particularly when you've got another two hundred and sixty. Apart, I don't know. Apart from the steps up to the Honda Bridge, it's very flat. Um, but so uh, um, I think. Do you know honestly? I, I, what the the sort of um, the the wake up call within within that first forty miles, or after about four or five miles, and you you're in a field, and I'd spent weeks and months and you know messing around with trainers and going back and picking a different type of train and all that stuff. It didn't matter because within five miles, I had these balls of mud uh, round each train and shoe. You know, like when you go in fresh snow, it was like mm-hmm. that with mud, and I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether these are two hundred pound innovates or whatever, or whether they're 50 pound Aldi trainers is, is of no consequence whatsoever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it was a, an interesting race. And I think they say, don't they, that you, you, you need to do these things once to, uh, to get the measure of them. So when you go back a second time, so, um, I, I, I want to do it next year. Yeah. Um, Robin? large, sorry. <laughs> what the line? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think I'll, uh, I'll have a look at a hundred mile race first <laughs> before going for 330. <laughs> You don't need to. You don't need to no. step up. Get no. in there. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, they, at... they're not very expensive, are they? Like the UTS have released their prices for this year, and it's a uh, hundred quid to do the twenty k. What? Wow! Isn't that crazy? Wow! I, th- I think um, Joe Faulkner put something up on on Twitter a few weeks ago uh, about one of the maybe one of the Lakeland races and. It set me off on the on the arc, and I, I looked at the twenty five mile arc race and, and the cost of that. Now, uh, I I don't I'm not a race organizer, uh, you know, by any stretch. So I don't I've, I've, I've volunteered on a few and I've, I've I've volunteered in a few in Wales and different things. So I see what goes on behind the scenes. Mm. It's a vast it's a vast amount of work, isn't it? Um, mm. and, and there's very few people with the time and energy to to do it. So we're, we're grateful for them all, but um it does seem that some of the prices are are rocketing but then yeah. so, the, so the prices of bread in the supermarket aren't they? Well, so, so... It. everything is isn't it and i and i think you know i think a lot of race directors and a lot of organizers got burned over covid um yep. didn't they so perhaps some you know there's some uh a wall building going on you know to sort of protect themselves in the future yeah, and some of and some of the real, if you call them marquee races, I, I don't know if we call them that, but you know, in this country, and some some of those races are 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 huge events. And I I, I was on the safety team for uh, the spine in in January, so I spent a week of of nights with them, and it's logistically it is incredible, huge. and yeah, huge. And I say, you know, there are eight or ten people on the team I was on. You know, each of us has got a, a car and each of us is driving all over the show doing jobs in the middle of the night that we need to do to keep everybody safe and to check on everybody. You know, we need to be fed and we need accommodation and all those things. So it's an absolute huge undertaking by some of these races. 
So I don't, uh, yeah, yeah, I certainly don't. I don't pick their price on the part at all. Um, but I've I've entered too many and had to pull out. So I was start thinking, I need to, my wife, I don't tell her everything, but I'm like, I need to start looking <laughs> at cheaper races. <laughs> <laughs> Is there also an attraction to the sort of the more self-supported side of things? Yeah, it, it is for me. I um, uh, so I'm thinking of uh, I deferred I deferred the arc from this year for a number of mm. reasons. So I've, I've got a place in the the hundred next year, and uh, I don't want to. I mean, I've done it once, and I, I don't want to do it again. Checkpoint to checkpoint, really crude, if you like. Uh, mm. I fancy doing it. If you can call it unsupported, I suppose it's not unsupported because you still get access to the checkpoints. But that mm. appeals more this time around to just do it, you know, without having, um, as my friend said, costume changes. Um, so I'll just tip up at one pair of trainers, maybe a drop bag, and just so that 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 appeals and um, you know, a bit more rough and a bit more rough and ready. Um, and I think that's the isn't that the success of the FKTs and things, isn't it? That the people you know the the sport offers something to everybody and um if you want to go and do dragons back at the at the top end and um have manicures and pedicures and fresh freshly made chips every night that's great if you want to carry your own bag on an fkt and be self supported equally it we accommodate mm -hmm. it so i think that's really that's good isn't it there's like the football model there's something for everybody yeah that's just what i was thinking actually when you said you didn't want to particularly go back and do the arc again uh but you seem happy enough to go over a few hundred miles so maybe you could do the southwest coast path instead it's a beautiful it's a beautiful path there's a race um up here though and so i'm i'm sort of hovering with the arc because there's a race up here the same weekend um hugh williams um uh so pen lynn or pen lynn the welsh are going to shout at the welsh are going to shout at me <laughs> um yeah. done a couple I've done a couple of his races and volunteered on one this year, actually, the, the She Ultra, which was an, an incredible success. Mm. Um, it was just women runners, and it was it was fantastic. But he's doing a, a, a winter one, that arc weekend, um, and it's slightly longer. I think it's about 130, 140 miles, and it's that it's that coast of, of Wales. That really appeals, because that's when we were trained for the arc last time. We used that coast um, because it was the closest thing that, to, to sort of Cornwall, if you like, and it is absolutely beautiful um and the, the people in the area that the sort of the welsh people the locals are just incredibly friendly and and, and supportive uh, and their checkpoints you know mixture of school halls and all those things he just puts on an absolutely cracking event then he was a good runner wasn't he and he's done lots of races himself so he, he knows what he knows what works and he knows what people mm. want there's a real community spirit so um but back to the path the path's beautiful you know a little bit mixture road trail but those sort of um, cliff edge mm. things like like um, like you get down in, in Cornwall and Devon. So, um, and it saves me £100 in petrol. It's another big tick for the, the – there's the Penlin 100, isn't there? Yeah. It, um, they've just done one a couple of weeks ago. And they've got – is that, is that the one they call a Pilgrim Ultra? Uh, yeah. I think he's got a Pilgrim one as well. Yeah. And he he's – his events are so well regarded, um, and he is an absolute. Um, he, he's he's brilliant, and um, you know his race briefings and stuff are really really good. So um, but that's that that's again that's the 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 smaller end of the the race director thing or the race sort of spectrum, isn't it? But so well subscribed, um, well attended, mm. uh, and and everybody seems to love them. So. Um, yeah, so that's 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 an option for early next year as well. Oh, yeah, you can't get better really than people recommending races, can you? No, um, I I, th I think when you look at smaller, if you like what you'd call smaller events, mm. and you and they're sold out quickly, that's a good sign that uh, it's a good event and they've got a bit of history to them, and um, people come back year after year as well, don't they? Which is um, which which is a sign of a good of a good event. That's why this podcast is so good because I'm just building a dossier of uh, of ultras <laughs> to do for the future. I'm never going to be able to pick my first one at this point though because everyone's just so enthusiastic about the ones that they've done. It makes it really hard to choose. It does, and I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I so I've got my list for next year. So when it came out of the line, I had a real, honestly, I've had such a gob on for a week. I was like, this is. I'm so so fed up 
to have not not got to the end because you know we're trains booked to get us home and we're going to fish and chips in Brighton and all those. You know, it was just like mm. they, they, we had we had certain markers that we were going to hit, and it was so um, so demoralising to not make it. So as soon as I got home a few days later, I was like, right, races for next year, and and you start looking, and I put a I put a really nice one in for May, um, which is only hundred mile, but it's in Greece, um, and it's a uh, yeah, it's from um, it's from uh, Sparta to ancient Olympia. Um, I think it's on the road, but, but um, it'll be warm. Yeah, and and the history, but you know, it's just you've got to look for races that grab you, haven't you? And, and sort of yeah. and different things grab different things grab different people. But that one um, just looks. And the Greeks, I love Greece, and the Greeks are dead friendly, and um, there's loads of checkpoints and loads of Greek food and all that stuff. So um, I'm really really looking forward to that one. But yeah. You, there's, there's so much out there that once you start dipping your toe in um, and you, you build up through the distances, uh, I find the problem, Casey, I don't know about you as well, but is it's just limiting them. Um, and, and I see really people who do... Two weekends a year. <laughs> well, but yeah, so that, yeah, unless you do something like the, the well, yeah. line, which gives you a, a five five or six straight days, but um, there's, there's, um, there's just so much out there to do and Mm. Um, you, you just got to, yeah, start pick your distance and 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 go. And I mean, if you get into the GP ultras, um, sort of mode of of look at their races, again, they they could, I don't know, it's every three or four weeks or something, but top quality races in great places, you know, like race across Scotland. Uh, the Sky is a really really amazing race. Um, you know, some of the, some of the hundred, they've got a chest hundred down here, which is lovely. Uh, the Pennine Barrier. Which is a fantastic day yeah. for people, um, and you know, uh, good routes and safe and well marked and mountain teams and all those things. So there's 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 loads out there, isn't there? Something. But I think if you, fun. yeah, I think you, you just got to find. And I suppose we all go through a different, not journey. It's a bit X factor, isn't it? But um, you know, you you, you want to pick off the, the the big ones or the the fancy ones or the popular ones, and then um, look at other stuff as well and. Um. Yeah, not be, not be too um too restrictive in what you what you're looking at. But it's got it's got to grab you, hasn't it? Because you've got to train for it, and you've got to invest all that time. And I don't know about you, but when I'm I'm training, I've always got a race in my head when I'm every day really. Yeah. Um. So it's got to you've got to have a focus, but that focus has to be it's the why, isn't it? And I don't go into all that. I'm not sure I go into all that. You know what my why is, but yeah. certainly do when it comes to a race. I've got to want to do. Um. I've got to do really you, want to do it for a particular reason. Do you think that's going back to what you were saying about the, um, you know, the disappointment when you had to pull out of the line? I mean, that it's quite, and perhaps it's sort of worse the longer the race, but the the sort of mental reset you have to have when something goes unexpectedly wrong, um, yeah. and and you've had this focus of this race for you know, however long you've been training for it um, and, you know, the planning and the the training and the, the, the logistics, because there's always logistics involved in ultras, yeah. um, the time off, time away from family and the, and, you know, how you envisage that race is going to go and how you're going to, you know, your, your plan for it, for it to just be gone like that. It, it, that it, it takes a huge sort of, and it, particularly when perhaps mid race, it happens mid race, so that you're already sort of tired, you know, struggling to deal with things. Uh, that's it, it. It's a it's a huge mental hurdle to to overcome and, and sort of reset from. Oh yeah, I think it's I think it's um, people that it's almost intolerable. I think I think um, that um, that whole DNF thing and and. Um, you know, it, it, I was, it, it was going to be my, yeah, it was going to be my next blog for you, Katie, around DNF and, and uh, you know, what mentally, what you, uh, where that puts you and the decisions you take. Because I think there's the decision, the decisions you make in your head up to the moment of the DNF. And there's, there's that turmoil of do I, don't I, who am I letting down? Is it a shame? I don't, not shame, but we were, we were sponsored. For this it was a chat we were doing it for a, a kids hospice 
So there's that added element of, oh my God, people give good money and, and all those things. Then there's the, um, the getting back to the hotel and you're just so tired and stuff because you've still done 50 odd mile and you still battle through Triffids yeah. and everything else that Mark Cockburn's thrown in the way. So, um, so you get back in and, and you've got that. Then, like any, for me, this is this is how the week played out. Like any big race, uh, there's an absolute, almost a depression after it, because it's been such a focus. You bought the, the different kit, you've you've packed, you've unpacked, you've you've done all those things to get you ready for that race, and you've you've played it out so many times in in your head, um, and um, it's a it's a void, isn't it? It's a void, and then you've got on top of that, you've got the so on top of the the event's gone, like I've had a two-week holiday in the sun and now I'm home and I'm like, bloody hell, I've got to go back to work. So you've got that to deal with. But then you've got the turmoil of, well, why did, a, why did it crack? What's the injury? Um, can I run tomorrow? Um, you know, which um, I've discovered no, I can't. Uh, and um, I really do on this occasion need to do what I'm told. Um, if I want to do some of these other races. Uh, it's It was a horrible, horrible week. So... Uh, a friend of mine, um, we we sort of signed up to this one together, and he's done hundreds and stuff. Yeah, he, he, I'd say he's um, he's he's hard as nails, quite frankly. And is is you know I've seen his different things after different races, and, and you've how the hell he's he's continued and got through. So um, he he went slightly longer than me on the line. So I got home on the I got home I got a train home from the line um, the next day. Uh, which was a bloody nightmare because I had to go from Hull back to through various places. Uh, then he packed. So I got in my car and drove all the way back to wherever he packed from in Lincolnshire uh, to pick him up, to drive back home. Uh, the two of us, we got to Stockport. He thought we were in Leeds. We were in Stockport. Basically, we had to just pull into a lay-by, put the shutters down and sleep for an hour because we were so both so destroyed. Mm. And then we met several times that week, different coffees and different things. And so you got our wives telling us, grow up and, and stop moping <laughs> but like we we couldn't because you just mm. it's been such a part of your life and and also it's not like i mean no disrespect to people who run five and ten k's fine but probably there's another one next week um mm -hmm. there yes. isn't another line for it there isn't another line for a year in fact there's something yeah. else i want to do next july that in theory the line could then be another two years and it's, that's a sort of that's a scab that's just going to Yes. No, isn't it? Until, until and, we go and we're back. not getting so, younger. <laughs> so. Well, this is the issue. This is the issue. My, my old job, um, this is the issue for me. So my old job, I used to do a lot of, uh, I was a football reporter. Uh, and I remember John Aldridge, who was uh, a great player for Liverpool. And I remember interviewing him once. And I remember Clint, nicest day, he was about, he, he must have been about 36, 37. I remember him saying to me, the game isn't the problem. The, the, the match isn't the problem. It's the recovery the day after. It now takes me three days and it used to take me one. And I think that's where I'm at. I'm like, why am I still got this bloody pain in my hip two weeks on? Like, I should be skipping down the street now. It's age and I, I'm, um, I feel it. I'm feeling it. And But then that's the beauty of ultras is, uh, you know, I've, I've I finished third in that Dublin to Belfast thing. Uh, I did the 100 miles, which for me, I did 100 miles in under 20 hours, which for me on the road, really, you know, dead, dead happy. Yeah, so the age, the age isn't a barrier, but the age and the recovery, and that's that's why I'm absolutely reassessing. I spent this last couple couple of weeks reassessing where I am mm. uh, and how I deal and how I deal with it because it's quite obvious to me. When you talk about the races that are on the on the schedule, it's quite obvious to me that I've just packed in the last 12 months, tried to pack in too much. Um, for my for my age, um, I need more. I I need more downtime. Um, yeah. I've got a very a very accommodating wife and daughter and stuff, but I need more. I need to factor in more recovery. You spoke uh, about in um, in that the first article that I read for Run Ultra uh, about how you didn't ever feel like you properly recovered from the arc, yeah, and that you rushed into well maybe rushed into a training a little bit. And then yeah, it's, it's the, the cure in strengthening conditioning and mobility. It's the problem, isn't it? It's it's the constant, it's the constant. Um, it's not a merry-go-round. Uh, it's not a hamster wheel because I love it. So I'm not. I don't want to be sort of derogatory about it. But it's that constant um, thing you get when you come out of a race. Come home, eat the cake, 
look at the medal. And then you're like, well, I've got another race in three months. Great back on, uh, you know, a week off, thought the blisters out, scrape the dead toenail off and, and off I go again. And, and it's, um, it's that constant. And the arc absolutely killed me. Um, I don't mean the, I don't mean the race itself. I mean the, the recovery. Uh, I critically underestimated um, how I should recover from that. But I had um, other races on the on the. In fact, it was the Dragons Back. So I had I was going from the Arc in January. Um, thought I need to take a couple of weeks off, and I was very very conscious of recce's and different things. And while I know while I know Snowdonia itself. Uh, some of the other stuff I knew I needed to get out and do it. Um, and I needed to keep moving, keep on the top of the weight, keep getting into the mountains and all those things. And I didn't think I had a week to spare. And the reality is I probably had an awful lot more than a week to spare and my body would have thanked me for it. But I piled more on top. So I came out of, you know, I, I, the last 20 miles of that uh, that first arc were horrific for me because um for anybody who's who's who plans on doing it um and you live up north and you think you you think you're okay because you're always in snow down you're all the lakes or the peaks then you go down to cornwall and it steps into a cove and steps out of a cove and there's hundreds of them mm. that's a different type of running altogether uh, and that took a toll on me that i just hadn't uh, really uh, considered um, and smash my knees and all those things. So, um, and I didn't take the time out. I, I looking back now, um, I categorically should have taken uh, a damn sight more time off. But I felt that pressure for the next thing, which was Dragon's Back. And in the end, because of it, I pulled out of the Dragon's Back because I'm just like, I, I haven't recovered properly. I'm just, you know, I, I've literally papered over the cracks, and more cracks are appearing, and I'm not prepared to waste a Dragon's Back entry. By 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 packing in halfway round or or whatever I, you know for me I'm doing it once and I want to finish it so um, yeah I, I, I go I, I stand by that first blog um, yeah you've you've got to give the you've got to take the recovery and look at sorry go on. well no I was just gonna say the trouble is is that so getting older is that you're not you know you you you're used to being able to do one thing. But, but then you've actually got to, and then, you know, as you say, it's a bite soon in the ass because, well, I've always been able to get up running again after a week, but, oh, no, now I can't. And then, you know, another five years and, you know, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to wait two weeks before we can start running again. It's sort of, yeah. it's, it's being able to anticipate that actually our, our needs are changing. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah absolutely categorically and uh, i suppose everybody else is, is like me you that for that test in the morning when you put your feet outside the bed for the first time and you see you see what hurts it always hurts whether it's <laughs> yeah what well, no but you don't you and then and then you get through that and you you let the dog out and you make yourself a cup of coffee and when you at some point realize you're going for the run that day um the first three or four steps it's like do these first three or four steps feel good mm. or do they feel like I've got to slightly hobble more on the right because the left hurts? Or, and and that, mm. that's a sign of, uh, you know, and I had that going into the line, you know, you did, the, the right knee's not working, so I'll just, uh, use you know, the left. so <laughs> use the left a bit more, and uh, but then you overcompensate. And, uh, the thing is as well, you know, I know the, I know the logic. I get the logic. I'm, I've, I've read far too much about all of it. Um, and I under and I understand it, but it doesn't stop me doing no. it. And it, I don't think it stops lots of us, does it? Because it's that it's finding that balance as well between. Um, so forget the line because the lines the lines are loosely. It's a very long fast no. walk. I suppose I suppose you could do it, but for longer races, hundreds and, and stuff like that, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of training goes into that, and you you ex you accept a degree of discomfort every day. I think. Um, that goes along with that train, and I I do, and um, yeah, and and it's that, um, and I know I'm succeed. You know, I've done an awful lot on my hips and things, and I know I'm succeeding when I get up off the couch. And I don't have to do the, the you know, I do feel better, um, but just not better enough to have gone and done what I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I should have, I should have absolutely pulled that one two weeks before and and just swallowed my pride. Uh, but it is, I I think it is age. I, I 
I see younger people than me and the, the, every few weeks they'll have to race. Robin? Um, uh, no, that's not me. <laughs> I couldn't believe how, <laughs> how eerily similar the article um, you wrote was to me at the moment because you mentioned a left Achilles, a right hip, and going too soon after a previous ultra. That is literally where I am today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm getting too young for that. Yeah. I'm too young for yeah. Achilles looks at tomorrow, sadly. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. And I've spent. I've spent a fortune um, on, and I, and I sort of hinted it in that, and, I, and I, there are in that that other blog piece, there are some amazing physios clearly uh, who do some fantastic work in sports and conditioning coaches and all that stuff. Uh, I spent an absolute fortune seeking out every solution from anywhere to every problem, and I remember one email last year was to some fella in Finland, and my wife's like, "You're not going to Finland." I'm like, "Listen." If I can go and have half, half an hour with whatever his name is in Finland, in Helsinki, I don't care. I, 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 I will do anything. Button, yeah, I want that magic button. And I, I, and I did end up with a chap in, in Belfast who is phenomenal, uh, a fellow called Tom Morrison. Uh, and, you know, it's not an advert for him. Go and have a look or don't have a look. But some of the stuff he does and the way he does it, just around opening the body up and mobility and stuff, is really, really good. And I did go to Belfast and I did a, a sort of one-day session with with him and a load of other people, uh, mostly broken runners. Uh, there's a consistent threat. There's a consistent thread, isn't there? Um, I, and what I learned from him and what I've learned from other people is you can do an awful lot yourself. Um, and you can. Uh, I'm not saying don't go for medical treatment when you, when you need to. That that goes without saying. But I think you can do a lot of self care yourself. Um, and, and take and responsibility yourself. Yeah, yeah. prevention and. and prehab and all those things um but you do i think there's a danger it's a danger i went down and still go uh, it's a danger for me i went down this rabbit hole and i still do and i'm doing it since the line i'm i pick up one book and then i pick up another book i'll go on a website and jump somewhere else because there's so much out there that um just absolutely can lead you down the down the garden path if you're not careful well yeah they and promise people... everything don't they that's the trouble People will take your money, and I've I've sat on the couch, and I, I you know this is the this is the process in my head. Genuinely, what's fifty quid? Fifty. Mm. If this works, that's worth fifty quid. And then it, you get it, and it doesn't work. You think, oh well, it's still cheaper than half an hour at the physio. And then you you're back on the couch the next week, and you you I'll go and see a chiropractor or whatever. Or I'll, I mean, I bought like, honestly. So before the line, uh, I took my daughter to Chester. Oh, no, it doesn't matter what city. I took my daughter out. Because I don't want to get anybody into trouble, uh, and I ended up in a um, in a shop because I wanted protein powder, and then I bought some pills for fifty pound that were going to strengthen the tendon and do this. And I, and I had a look on that. I went over to the Costa Coffee and I'm like, I had a quick read of the the adverse effects. Effects doesn't seem to be a lot. I'll take a chance because you get so desperate mm. um, to just get to the start line i like the line i was like oh, i've been here before um I, I did something in spain a couple of years ago and i like you know bit of an achilles thing going in i run into fitness and by day two three the, the achilles had gone i've forgotten about it It was great so that was the same with the line i'm like that'll be fine um my hip will stop hurting or, or something else will hurt enough so you, you do that as well don't you but you you look you reach for anything and I've I've gone full circle and I am categorically back at the reality for me is I just need to do more strength work across the piece with that mix of mobility. Um, and um, if you look at my garage now and uh, another kettlebell arrived a different weight the other day and I've, I've got a sandbag a different weight and I've got TR extra. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to go at it. Um, but it doesn't come you know, naturally to us, though, does it? That's the trouble. No, no. And I, so my 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 background was cycling, and I, I love distance cycling and hundred mile time trials and fifty mile time fifty mile time trials. But I rode myself into the ground. I never. I, I, there was one weekend where I did, three, not arrogance. It was just stupidity. But I did three time trials in one one weekend, and it, it finished me off. Um, mm. We don't learn, do we? Because we love it, and we just want to get back out and do it, and. The, the turmoil 
when you can't do it and the you know i have tantrums and i come off social media and i don't want to see what anybody else is doing and and all those things so i must be a nightmare to it must be a nightmare to live with um and I, but i look at people and think is this the reality does this have to be the reality i don't know it's, it's my reality at the minute um i'm certainly a lot better than i was 12 months ago when that first blog went up um but i think um i think it's a like the painting the four bridges it's a constant work isn't it and you, you'll sort your achilles out uh, which is obviously because you're overcompensating for something in your hip or something yeah uh, not obviously but perhaps then your hip will then the other side will go so yeah <laughs> welcome to welcome to ultra marathons what sorry robin what did you say you were doing tomorrow i uh, just got a zero appointment for to get my achilles check because i i ran four i was only four k into my run on saturday and every step, I was just thinking, you should stop. You should stop. This is getting worse. And it's so difficult to just come to that realization and physically stop. Um, but I was uh, I was proud that I actually did because it had been getting gradually worse for a couple of weeks and I'd been completely shunning it to the back of my mind. And so. a, a, your Achilles so, is not something you want to mess around with either because if, that, if that's damaged, that yeah. is long-term damage, isn't it? yeah so hopefully uh, there's something but you know I've, i'd started to do some strength and conditioning a few weeks ago perhaps it was a little bit too late but i haven't been doing any mobility ever so maybe that's something as well note to self i mean you, parties. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean your physio is going to tell you to drop your heel off a block and do these yeah. funny raise funny raises 30 of them before breakfast but it, it, you, you sound like you've caught that early enough um which is which is great and, and and i'm just a bit i'm just a bit world weary of it now and i'm like like <laughs> achilles hurts i'll just do some of them calf raise things uh, yeah well i've got an i've got an app which is really is really useful prehab the prehab guys don't know if you've seen that um mm -hmm. so you just type in where today's ailment is uh, and it gives you some exercises to do to sort today's ailments. Uh, if somebody does an ultra marathon one that, that predicts where the next ailment's going to be, I'm all in because uh, it seems to be I'm, I'm you're just chasing niggles around the body. Um, yeah, it's good, it's good fun. <laughs> I've made a note. I've made a note. I'll, I'll have a look at that after. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're giving him a great impression, Gary. <laughs> uh, no, but the but the the sense of achievement once you. Mm. conquer all your injuries and illnesses and and get to the finish line is is great isn't it and uh, that's the, is it yeah that's that's the crack isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah it's something that keeps you something that keeps us coming back and um i don't know i i i i, I don't go all deep on it but you know whatever the why is and i don't know but um personally i just love it i, I love the distance and i love um but i was the same with i was saying cycling you go into work on the monday and People say, oh, what have you done this weekend? You're like, well, we rode 200 miles to Scarborough or something. And people be like, what? So I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a buzz in that for me. I enjoy that. Um, I was really, I was really peeved after the line. And uh, uh, um, she's become a good friend uh, down at down in London, sent her message. And, you know, she's so many people in the, in the population, 60 million people do marathons. You know, so many more people do this. And you broke it down into a, fraction of how many people actually run marathons so uh, ultra marathons sorry that's no point not 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 six or something um so that made me feel a bit better you know but mm -hmm. i um i it's it's a it's a problem once you start uh, <laughs> do you because um, i don't know what's where's the off ramp i don't know there's an off ramp <laughs> do you enjoy doing the the safety and the and the volunteering for for events does that does that scratch part of the itch at all for you yeah um it absolutely does and i'm a, I'm a firm believer uh in uh, everybody who uh races um at any race at any distance should mm. just put a little a little bit back in uh, and my so um gb ultras a lot i keep going back to them but the lovely and laura and ian and, and, and wayne who who I think he owns the company, but you know, the lovely people, uh, they put some incredible races on. The logistics of these things are phenomenal. Um, and I I sort of made a, a a promise to myself to at least volunteer once a year. So that, you know, if I'm going to do one of their races, I, I feel like I put a bit back. 
Um, I've probably volunteered maybe this year. I've done the Pennine Barrio. I, I did that mm. one. But it's not always because I'm injured. Um, it sounds like it's always because I'm injured, but it's, sometimes it's I'll volunteer on that because I've got a race in a few weeks, so I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to sort of blow myself out or whatever. But um, Pennine Barrio is a lovely race. Um, love volunteering for them. Uh, some some of these. Um, some of the race directors, some of the companies are outstanding. But like if you if you give up 12, 14, 16 hours, travel overnight and all those things and volunteer, you get a, you get an equivalent race entry uh, the next year, which is great with GB Ultras because they do so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I will pick my words carefully about other races uh, that um, demand an awful lot of you. Um, and you don't volunteer because you, you want – a race place it's it is nice to put a bit back so that races can happen but i think some you know when there's a considerable investment in your time and, and energy and everything else um i think maybe volunteers should be looked after slightly better i'll leave it there but because i don't want to get into trouble and i might end up volunteering for them again but i i um i love volunteering i love being on the mountain teams i love being up and seeing people you know you get the you get the racing snakes then you get the the average the rest of us then you get other people who are absolutely smashing themselves to get in before a cutoff or whatever, and it's brilliant, mm. genuinely brilliant, and it's um, it, it really affirms your sort of all your love for the sport and everything else, and everybody should do it. Um, you know, I, I think everybody should do it. I think everybody should just go out and and you see, I think it's a shame volunteering. Sometimes you see the same faces doing it. Um, be nice if other people um, did it as well because these. You know, so, so you think of what it takes to put a race on over 100 miles and the logistics of crew and all those checkpoints and safety yeah. teams and everything else. It's it's phenomenal. Um, and I think it will be a shame that when people look to do a race, the race isn't there because it's gone. It's, it's off the calendar because the organisers couldn't couldn't put it on. Um, you know, there's a, there's a danger of that with some races, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I love it. I love being on the safety teams. I've done it. I've had a couple of really... Um, really testing experiences this year because of bad weather uh, and categorically if it wasn't for the people on the safety teams a couple of runners would have been in real significant trouble so it's nice to be part of it's nice to be part of that as well uh, and it's good to see the machinery in full in full swing and saving people and, and doing what it's supposed to do so uh, yeah I fully recommend it I think you, you I, I you, think it does it does make it. you appreciate what goes on behind the scenes as well doesn't it i think there's lots of runners that will sort of sign up to a race and yep. that's you know 200 miles away from where they live um tip up and and not really have a clue as to what goes into organizing it um yeah and volunteering just i think it's just yeah it just gives you such a unique perspective and you get to see everyone from the front to the back yep. uh, i think it's really nice also i'm seeing a lot more races now um sort of uh, marking the last runners um, as they mm-hmm. cross the line because mm-hmm. you know it's always been a cliche that the the elites say oh you know we uh, we have full, full respect to those people at the back because they're on their feet longer I mean they genuinely do <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. believe that and think that because it is it, it is it is almost harder when you're out there for two or three times the length that you know the guy at the front who finished it in eight hours Absolutely. I do actually um, put on a couple of races, but they're only uh, sort of five, six miles, one's road, one's fell. But then once you've done a couple now, I'm thinking, well, maybe I could do a 10 mile race. Maybe I could do a 20 mile race. But then you look at the the routes and all of the permissions you'd have to get. It must take forever to get through all of this stuff for a 20 mile race, never mind a hundred miles. Uh, yeah, then, absolutely. And- great. <laughs> And if you look at social media, you look on social media at, at some of the um, some of the threads and some of the sites related to some of the races, and you see some of the inquiries that that the RDs and the the sort of more permanent helpers have to deal with, um, and, and that they're all valid inquiries, RD people. But my God, you know, it, it ain't just the race; it's many, many months before and and many, many months after, and and always as well. There's just that um, what if what if something does go wrong. Um, and and you know um, what if 
things conspire against us and, and, and we end up in a, in a, in a bad situation. Um, so it's, it's, it must be st- incredibly stressful yeah. for, for RDs and, and senior race people. Um, yeah, constantly. But I suppose it's, it's great when you can go to a race and as a runner, you don't see any of that. That's nice as well. You just, you, you get the whole experience and you've had a nice day or a nice yeah. weekend or a nice week. Um, I think um, I did a race in Spain a couple of years ago, uh, which was a five day, maybe the race was five oh, days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I'm going back. I want to go back next year. A phenomenal race. Um, five days. Your camp moves with you every night. They move your camp and, um, you know, you're watered and fed and even the bill showers and everything, you know, like, that. you know, it's, it's rustic. Uh, but it's it's everybody's just all in it together and um but the, the, the logistics in that are phenomenal you know bringing runners in from all over the in fact all over the world uh, the, the year i did it last year the year before runners from canada and singapore and different things um the logistics of, of that are, are incredible and um how did you find that race uh, amazing one uh, option how, yeah, how did you choose it sorry one option. Oh, how did a fa- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, run ultra, run ultra. Um, so, um, UK's premier <laughs> listing site. Yes, of course. It, yeah, um, I, I think I just decided I wanted somewhere hot, and um, because I'm just sick of grey clag, and uh, I just started searching, uh, and there were a couple of race reviews came up, and um, the the couple who now run it, um, I think they're both American, um, but um. You know, I dropped them a line and stuff, and the website looked good, but not overly commercial. Um, so I think it was initially it was a it was a yeah web search. Um, but you get it. I'm just I'm doing this race in this thing in Greece in May. The web search, it just you know yeah. Greece hundred mile ultra marathon. Here we go. That looks great. So I haven't been let down yet on anything because there's normally somebody's written a blog somewhere, haven't they? And there's a there's a race report or run ultra road. there's a race report somewhere from from somebody who's done it and people are normally pretty honest um it, you know the, it's not like having to read a holiday brochure thing where they say shingle instead of beach people are pretty 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 blunt about it so it's good mm-hmm. well that's a race uh that's a race i would thoroughly recommend to to anybody uh, yeah i'm, I'm to... sure go on Sorry, I was just saying I'm I'm sure I'm counting more than five races for next year now, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I I mean I'll, I'll I've got a few it's if not this then that type scenarios. Um so um yeah. How many joking? If not the if no no if not the arc then uh, that Hugh Williams won the same weekend because it's slightly further a bit closer. Mm-hmm. And I've done the arc, so it's a bit of a um then I've got yeah, uh, ten drink. I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, do that. Did you yeah, tell you were doing the dragons back this year? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to. I've deferred the place, mm. um, and that is September. Um, so it, it sort of depends on line, or I want to go back to Spain again in in July because it's just like the summer we're having. I just don't think I could cope with another summer like this. So the thought of a week in Spain and 30 odd degrees is just could be too much to 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 ignore. Um and then Dragons back in Dragons back in September. Um and then uh, see what see what happens after that. Uh, so I think that's five. That this races. But is yeah. that next year, not not this September. No, not this one. Yeah, no, sorry. It's the following yeah, I pulled, yeah, the following September. Yeah, yeah, following September. Um so yeah, we'll see. There's it depends on aging body. Yeah. Sorry, Robin, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? I was, I was just going to ask uh, the Sparta to Olympia one. Do you know how many checkpoints there are? Because Spartathlon's got something like seventy. Yeah, uh, uh, there's loads. There's loads. Yeah. Um, but they're de- yeah they're different. I mean, I love Greece uh, and we lived there for a while. My wife um, just love love Greek people. Their definition of a checkpoint. Probably wouldn't be um, GP Ultra's definition of a checkpoint. Uh, I think it's like a decorating table with some bits of, but fine. Um, I think that just pit stops, water stops. Right. Um, so 
plenty. No, no problem. I mean, you could certainly. I think uh, I read a drop bag as well. Um, so um, certainly you can just do a race vest, right? A, a small race vest, uh, and ping from checkpoint to checkpoint, and um, that would be that would be the plan probably. Um, that's mostly on road and through villages and different things. So there's always and the Greeks will be out. Because uh, they always are, you know, so local, you get balls and different things. So um, I haven't looked at it. Although I'm in it, I, I'm offended. I haven't looked at the logistics too much just yet. Um, but it should be it should be pretty good. But it's just that um, I've always wanted to go to Sparta. Um, and we got cl- quite close on a holiday last year. We didn't hire the car in the end and we didn't go. So I'm like, oh, that, that looks quite good. Um, just that historic thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. So be, I mean, I, I'm not. I'd love to do Sparta half um, and uh, qualifying is tough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think. Well, you, Mark Cockburn does his track one hundred in October, mm. um, which I had one eye on this year. And I've, I've, I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to do that now because uh, you can do a reasonably quick time around that because you're just doing. There's no traffic lights, it's just loops of a track. So and you can have your little drop bag uh, right next to you. So you can so you could you could probably do a you know, that's the best chance of a qualifier time, isn't it? Then uh, yeah. some of these other uh, other races. Um could so you that do was, that um, mentally. Could I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Things so. if there's a there's a goal, isn't it? There's a mm-hmm. um so it's a long it's a long, yeah, a long story, but I did the tunnel this year. Um which is his, the 200 mile thing through the tunnel in, in Bath. Um, but I I had the Dublin to Belfast thing a few weeks later and I decided that I had a better chance of doing well in Dublin to Belfast. So I went into the tunnel, slightly half cock really, um, but I did whatever I did in, in, in that. I don't know. I, I, I had a plan to just do 50 and I'm just so, you know, I didn't DNS and turn up and, and see how it went. And people talk about the mental thing of that. I, I loved it because um, when it goes dark, it's just like running at night. Mm-hmm. Running at night with a headlight on, so there's no, there's no difference. So it was, uh, it was absolutely. That probably don't want to d- destroy the mystique of it for him because um, he plays on the mental torture of the tunnel. But uh, I found that um, with with the head torture on and stuff, it was just like like running at night. Although you're on this, you're on this white line. Each side of the tunnel's got this white line. And you do find yourself just getting in this sort of groove of running up this white line for a mile, turn around. It's not quite a mile, by the way. It's slightly more. And I turn around and come back a mile and a bit the other way. So, um, but Is yeah, that the track, the track funny run. things as you run. Um, it's you, you. It's weird because um, you're seeing the same people, which is quite good, quite nice. Because you're passing uh, the same people, so you're going that way and they're coming this way, and. Um, People have different strategies for you. You basically your 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 bag, if you like, is just out just outside the entrance to the tunnel. If you're really organised, you have a camp chair. So people have different strategies for when they stop and stuff. So you're seeing the same people, um, and you're getting the same noise and stuff. And it's the same. Uh, one end of the tunnel's really cold, but it was this year. And one end wasn't, and and then we had snow and stuff. Um, but it was. You, you get into a a, a rhythm. Um, on this white line, um, which is which is crazy. Um, how you how you feel? It's really quite nice, and it's it's a beautifully like manicured tarmac path. So um, you know it's 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 lovely underfoot and stuff. Just put your big, really bouncy trainers on, and off you go. Um, it's what really quite wear? really quite nice. Sorry. What what shoes did you wear? Uh, I I didn't wear the big bouncy road shoes um <laughs> i wore a battered old pair of exodus ultras right. uh, so, the, so, because they were really comfortable and i've worn them that much in train and they really had no trail grip on them uh, but ultimately they just fit on my feet and i knew they weren't going to give me problems so i did about 40 mile on them and then i thought i should probably change into these big ridiculous uh, the night hog they're not hoka um they're um, solomon yeah aeroglide like things but they, they've got like ridiculous pushing and stuff and i just thought it should change uh, and i changed for about two mile and then went back and put the exodus ultras on because uh, they were just so so comfortable um but there's some people in like 
hugely ridiculous hawkers that added three feet to the three inches to the height and everything else. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't think they'd be good for me because I think I'd probably get even more injuries in those. Yeah, you stuck to what you knew your feet could handle. That was a smart decision by the sounds of it. Yeah, they just, they're old. Uh, they're old and battered. But I also had, I was like, I had a plan to come out a 50 odd mile, but I thought, if, if I'm stupid and I feel all right, and I actually did feel all right, I suppose, I might just stay in uh, and I'll take these old trains because I can just cut the ends out of them or whatever if that's what I need to do. So, um, but it was all, they, they were fine. They were, they were great. Um, but people have their own preferences. I'm slightly now, so I won't, I'm going back to Walters, I think, because uh, I'm just like the whole hip thing. Um, I've run those previously for about two years. I had no hip, in, no hip problems at all because of the way the zero drop. I think I need to look at Innovate now. I need to come back and look at Innovate again uh, because I think they're now, their new range is, I think they've got zero drop and a much wider toe box, which, which thank for me, um, yeah, is we, long overdue. The zero drop isn't out yet, but it is coming. But yes, the, yeah. they've they've gone for, uh, yeah, they've redesigned the footbed. Yeah. yeah, a lot more. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think that's why I've, I've, I've just literally picked up another pair of, of ultras, uh, just because of the foot, the foot bed. Uh, I am absolutely, you know, when you know something makes, you know, in your head for you, for me personally, something makes sense. And that wide splayed foot uh, just makes sense. And I've gone too far the other way and, and I've um, ended up restricted with narrower and narrower. And I've, I've bought a couple of pairs that have, I've had, and I'm like, why have I even, why have I bought those? And it's so, it's so against what I believe in because I do believe that a, a wide footbed and stuff just just works better. Mm. Um, so anyway, I'm, so I'm not back in ultras because I particularly want the zero drop or that wide footbed. But I will look. But I'm going to have another look at the innovates because the um, mm. the, the, the extra width thing. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll have a look. So the the Viking Way Ultra is that is that your next yeah. race? No, I. I uh, Ah, I can't, um, because I'm because I'm such a bloody crock at the minute. Um, I I'm going to do probably. Uh, Hugh's got the pen in winter, uh, early in early in uh, November. Um, it's only 37, 38 mile. Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, it's a, a, such a good race. It's round that uh, round that headland, and he does a bit of a sort of Barkley type thing where you have to per page an hour of a book and it's just yeah. a really really good day and i did it last year uh, and the weather was horrifically beautiful um, so i'm hoping we get proper sort of mid wales winter this year then i want to do the tour to hell Valley in december again yeah beautiful yeah i should have done it two years ago i kicked myself i was i was in it two years ago uh, was it last year two years ago and um for a number of personal reasons at home just child care and everything else i decided to not leave until the saturday morning uh, in my car that um didn't have four by four tires and i did there was a horrific you know mm. downpour whatever you call it um i got as far as almost carlisle something i had to turn around and come back i was devastated had i gone the night before it would have been the other side of the big hill the other side of the snow and i'd have been able to do it so i'm going to go back this year and, and do that one because um again just um not yet. I don't mean not dismissively cheap and cheerful. I don't mean it like that. But a, not, and I don't mean back to basics. But a a sort of a grounded race that um, you know really appeals. And um, and either whatever then do in January, whether it's Arc Hundred or this uh, winter one, uh, a good little sort of bridging point to that, isn't it? Really. Um, so that's well, yeah. That's and what, and Joe what the plan. Joe's always believed in sort of yeah that the as you say a cup of tea at the start and the finish yeah. and off you go you should know what you're doing and um, yeah absolutely you know have some mountain law and of course he's also mm -hmm. got that new race uh, uh law 75 yes February. February. February another one for the the winter I know <laughs> it's 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 75 miles in the middle of about the second weekend in February I've looked yeah um I looked at that um but if I <laughs> I, I I stand to repeat the ridiculous mistakes of old, don't I? If I do, oh. I do that 
want to do that in February, two weeks after the arc. So, uh, and the Viking Way is something like the first weekend in December. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, I, I, I should never say that. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would love, to, I'd love to do it, but I think uh, I've promised a couple of people that I'm um, going to strip back to basics and not do s- ridiculous distances until. January, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't really fit this year. But I would like to do. It. But he's, um, I don't know if he's if I'm giving away anything. But um, Mark Cockburn had said he'd like to put um a winter ver. In fact, I'm not giving it away because he put it on social media. Um, he'd like to do a winter version of the line. Um, wow. that would be, uh, that would be phenomenal. I suspect he'd have to have checkpoints, wouldn't he? But um, that would be. Mm. absolutely phenom- phenomenal because it's it's a weird old i don't mean weird as a nasty but it's a weird weird old territory that 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 like flat land and these lanes and different things long it, long straight trip? lanes or yeah so so the 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 line uh i don't think is i think it's a the meridian trail is a route on a map um mm. but it's not like i don't I don't think I might be wrong. I don't think it's a sort of uh, a, a proper way marked route. Uh, the Viking Way, uh, my my understanding of, of it is it is, uh, and at least the middle sort of seventy to eighty miles is, um, you know, marked trail with. Where does that go? Uh, it goes. Um, it goes just south of of Hull. Um, um, same area for isn't about one hundred. Yeah, for about 140 odd miles, sort of due south, if you like. Um, whereas the line starts northeast of Hull, which was the real head mess as well, because you just it like was a, it was like a little thing at the top before. You, you, so, uh, and he, he loved. I'm sure he loved this Mark Cockburn because uh, this this he loves all this stuff. But so the line 300 is 330 miles. If he took off that little dog leg bit and started it in Hull, it would be 300 miles. Because of the dog leg bit, it's three hundred and thirty. So he, um, he added, yeah, because he says you can't because the, the the Meridian Trail takes you across the Humber, and because clearly you can't swim the Humber. Alone. I'm sure he's probably thought about it. Uh, you can't swim swim the Humber, so um, he puts you the other side of it, and I, I I can see why he does it. Actually, it's to um, there's a there's a stress if you like in hitting that Humber Bridge checkpoint at nine o'clock because uh, um, the nasty man's going to come and lift the bridge and you won't be able to get across so there's a stress in there's a stress in hit, in hitting that um, and you have to run it loosely where, where you can run you have to run it uh, that first bit I think um, so and you have to carry everything and, and you, you don't really want to stop the, the scarf and you just want to crack on and get that out the way so I can see why he does it it's a good sort of thoughts the wheat from the chat sort, yeah, and I was I was most definitely on the chaff side this year, um, but no, we 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 got it, we hit it. Um, everybody everybody hit it, um, but it's just I don't think anybody would not hit it, but it's just in your head. And then you're, you're also like, so I ran it with my mate Neil, and we were like, we don't need to hit this bloody checkpoint. Like, the, the, we'll just climb the fence and get over it. It's you know, it's a race of self exploration, and we'll we'll just. We'll somehow get across the Humber, but then you've got that thing. Well, but if we then do that and we finish the line, but we fail to meet that first checkpoint, we won't finish the line. It's like that. It's like that taking a sneaky little shortcut. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have played well. So we did. Made sure we we hit it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one really? hell of a race. Mm-hmm. Good race. One hell of a race, isn't it? Why me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's it, you look at um oh yeah. I mean we looked at we looked at you know where we would be on day five and um you, you think, oh well that's London, you know, that's that's civilized and we'll be able to get loads of food and stuff, and then you like you look at where it goes through and you're thinking we just have to keep moving. Um and just like if you puncture here, you're on your own. You know, there's just get through um Isle of Dogs and other places, which I'm sure are lovely in their own way, but we were like, right, you know, you've got to do there's a 70 mile chunk of London or something. You've got to, we've got to time it so that we can then do London in a in a wanner and get to the other side and then um 
you know, you get back into the countryside and stuff loosely. So there's all those um, bivy down in London somewhere. That's a bit well, I mean you can obviously, but yeah. not... well that was our that was our plan, but it's interesting because we'd we'd uh, until I tripped up on the glitters, um, you know, I was carrying a sleeping bag, uh, a sleeping bag liner, uh, an air pad, uh, an inflatable air pad. Uh, I took all that up on top of the glitters and fell over uh, and decided I wasn't going to take any of those things in the end. So I literally just had a bivy bag and um, an agreement that we would just find bubble wrap or something, whatever we could find to to go inside the bivy bag. And that's what we'd have done in London. We were like, well, if we're, if we're going to camp behind a subway, we'll just set some cardboard boxes and stuff them inside the bivy bag. And then on the start line, because you don't care. And like, there's no, it's one, it's one kit for the week. One pair of socks is like literally, you know, it's that's it. Um, and then we were on the start line, and we thought we were great because we we paired everything back, and the the pack weighed three kilos and stuff. And then two other fellas tipped up. We had a quick chat with them, and they were like, "No, I'm not bothering with a bivy bag. We'll just um, if we need to sleep, if we need to sleep, we'll just throw our waterproofs on and just get our head down." I'm like, "Right, okay." So next year, or the year after, whatever, it will just be because you just you notice every. You notice every step, don't you, with you're carrying all that weight. And even a bivy. I mean, I've got, I can't dare tell my wife, but, you know, there was another bivy bag came the week before the race and it was 100 grams lighter. You know, I got the bivy bag down to like 300 grams or something. Um, but then we, we stopped. And this is outrageous, really. We stopped at about 10 miles um, and into the bin went a spare T-shirt, something else, something else, something else. And I hope somebody's come along and pulled them out and got use out of them. But we were just like, we, you know, what it's like when something plays. We can't carry this stuff for another thirty odd forty miles to to get past the bridge, um, or till we find a post office and we can post it all home and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we 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 were conscious that even though we thought we'd gone absolutely minimalist, we'd still overpack compared to some of the others. Um, and on you the, know, it was uh, on the UTS hundred uh, k that I did speak to a few people who'd post kit check got rid of a few things from their bag and i was like if yeah. you get checked on the way around then that's it i could never take that risk but i can't imagine they check in a race like this so so there was no so the man there's two points in, in this and really really quite interesting things so there's the mandatory kit i think was neither here nor there it's like um ability to extract yourself from the badlands if you if you end up having to pack in the middle of boston or, or somewhere wherever the places we went through so phone charge and stuff like that um but it is you know it's a it's a test of being self-sufficient um so the mandatory kit was i think it had to be like the usual stuff you know basically not basic but waterproofs and stuff just common sense things um and i but on the other point uh people ditching mandatory kit uh in other races especially mountain races i haven't twice this year seen and been involved in helping people where mandatory kit absolutely saved their lives. I mean, there's no, can't put too fine a point on it. Uh, one was the spine on the last night of the spine when we ended up at two o'clock in the morning in minus whatever it was. And then there was another race this year. It was a mountain race uh, where uh, a runner fell um, and she had the right kit uh, and other people behind had the right kit. But categorically, had she have not had, um, it would have been a different outcome. So those things that, 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 people think they can ditch uh, i'm really like i've seen the other side of that and, and my absolute advice would be just do what you're told like because it, it if it doesn't save your and i know this is a bit of a cliche but if it doesn't save you or save your life it may just say somebody else's uh, and i've seen that twice now uh, and, and categorically you know that yeah who wants to carry a spur long sleeve base layer when um your Gore-Tex coat costs you 500 quid and it weighs 50 grams. But you know what? When you sat for an hour on the side of a mountain in piss and rain and you've, you, 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 that energy drop, that temperature drop in your body after you've been committing yourself for 30 or 40 miles, that cold that you get when you stop, can you imagine that on top of a mountain or on the side of a mountain when you've got the pain of the injury on top then you've got this drop in temperature. I mean, I, I, it's I've seen it. I, I've seen it twice where we had to involve mountain rescue, and people would categorically be in a really bad way if they if they'd skimmed on the kit. Um, I get it's expensive. I understand that it's, it's expensive for all of us, 
but I really don't think people should shortcut it at all. Um, especially when the you know the, the, the likes of GB Ultras Wayne, they put so much thought into these races. The mandatory kit isn't just because they want to make your bag heavier, right? Um, the the line don't don't misconstrue me. The stuff we we sorted on the line was stuff that you know we decided to carry a spare t-shirt, a spare pair of socks, you know, a spare this. It wasn't necessary because we were just going to live for a week in the same pair of shorts and the same pair of socks. So that's what that was. But mandatory kit in in mountain races and stuff is is essential. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen that, and I. Um, mm. Maybe sometimes you need to, to you need to physically see a runner in distress to, to get yeah. a real grip. Yeah. On, I don't know. I, well, I, I mean, I've been on the spine like you, um, safety team, and yeah, I've had to go and collect, uh, collect yeah. a runner from um, you know who was bundled up in their in their emergency bivvy. They'd called for help, needed help getting out, um, and uh, yeah, and I think also is something that um, that that Joe's always said that mandatory kits shouldn't necessarily be the the, the bare minimum or the or the, the absolute lightest um actually you should just get the best you you can because uh, you know the 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 lightest weight waterproof um is 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 meaningless up on a mountain in in January um you know needs needs to be a hard shell really Hundred hundred percent, and even uh, not even January, like May. So I think the Pennine barrier this year was May, um, and the runners were skipping past me quite rightly. So in shorts and t-shirts and stuff, and I'm on top of whatever whatever the the three mountains that was, and I've got every layer that I brought with me, and a buffalo jacket, and a Gore-Tex waterproof coat, and a hood, and a hat, and the, the hood up, and a buff up to here. It's the same day, it's the same conditions, but I'm stood doing not a lot. Um, yeah. So if you've run and you have that trip, and it might be a minor, you twist your ankle or whatever, it's, it's a minor It's a minor trip and we all get them. But then five minutes later, if you haven't got that right kit, uh, that becomes a different scenario altogether. And our, you know, what we love about this country, isn't it, is the varied conditions and different things. Um, all, year, all year round, that can that can catch people out. And I... I um, there was a story a couple of years ago. Uh, it wasn't a story. It was a real life thing. A couple of years ago about the, the really experienced runner uh, up in Scotland who died of hypothermia. Uh, went out on a training run. Routine, nothing, 10-mile training run. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know the, the detail of it, but what, what I did after that was I went and bought the Garmin InReach Mini thing. Um, yeah. And even that isn't it? Even, even that's not a great help if you fall over and you've got concussion. But at least it's, it's something. But... You know, that that really set me thinking as well. You know, an innocuous train and run in this country any time of the year can have disastrous consequences. And, and I think we take it for granted, don't we? We go out in these conditions so often and so much yes. that we take it for granted, but we, we shouldn't. But well, I think I mean, it's like... Uh, I was in the Alps recently um, and they had a blizzard on the Stelvio Pass um, yeah. you know, in June, middle of June. It happens it happens anywhere you know the mountains in particular obviously yeah. you just the, the weather is yeah yeah the the, the, first, the first mile of of the line two weeks ago july we had hailstones july uh, and we were like and the thunder the sky was black and then we had thunder and lightning which was fine but hailstones in july for god's sake and Don't, we've not yeah, had summer yet it. either we're, we're still in winter <laughs> no we're, we're yeah it's um yeah it's it's promising isn't it and then disappears as quick as it promises yeah. we probably had we can probably count on one hand how many good days we've had now oh yeah and you look back you look back don't you so you get memories on facebook and stuff and you go bloody hell i was in shorts in snow don't you in march like <laughs> last year and I, i'm not even in shorts now in july you know yeah. anyway um uh, yeah it's right. which is well, why you should always go abroad and do a nice race somewhere once a year like greece <laughs> like greece, greece. yeah, yeah. Yes, maybe next year, maybe next year. Yeah, but I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop you because we could just talk all night. <laughs> and it's. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Um. It, no, it's been really great. Thank you both so much. Um. We. I think we've covered so so much. It's been. 
fascinating to talk to you Gary and it's been really it's been lovely to to hear about the sort of different races the races that are under the the radar a bit mm -hmm. um and the frankly ridiculous lengths you know there's not the 268 miles of the Pennine Way is not the only ridiculously length race out there no um, no, so. no absolutely absolutely not Robin uh, I hope we've uh Oh, expanded your horizons and a little bit more and put some more races on the bucket list yeah i'm looking abroad now kate i'm looking abroad <laughs> <laughs> this is it this is my evil yeah. plan i'm going to live vicariously through robin now <laughs> it's gonna be one hell of a list <laughs> yeah um, that's the that's the problem that's the problem <laughs> Well, he's still young and, and hopefully, yeah. Well, happy recovery, Robin. I hope that Achilles um, gets sorted out soon. Thank you. Um, Gary, I hope you, you could continue continue your hobbling. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's, there's a list. Yeah, yeah. I'm no. picking, off, picking them off, picking them off one by one. Get back to that strength training. Both that's the of one, you. that's the key. Yeah, yeah it is the key. Yeah. Strength and stretching, definitely. All right. Well, have a good evening, both of you. Thank Lovely. you. Lovely. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.